Hey guys, make sure to like and subscribe, any support from y'all is appreciated. If you want me to post a specific manga or novel leave a comment and I'll try my best. If the video is too fast or slow for your liking then you can adjust it in the right corner of the video. My current goal is to hit 100 subscribers. So to used, light heel, on the palm of Fred. He stopped the bleeding of the wounds before he took out something from his bag. This was a potion to completely heal the wounds. His skill was only a basic heal skill. It couldn't completely heal any wounds, so to completely heal any wounds with leaving a scar a potion was needed. No need. Fred shook his head as he declined the potion that Soda gave. We also have some potion. No need to use a potion in such shallow wounds. Okay. Soda nodded and he placed back the potion in his bag. So your name is Cluster? Lumalia looked at Cluster and asked while patting her head. Yes. Cluster nodded meekly. Where are your parents? Lumalia asked her in a gentle tone. Cluster replied by shaking her head. I see. I'm sorry for asking such question. It must be hard for you. Lumalia said as she gently caressed Cluster's head. Soda looked at Lumalia with a surprised expression. Her tone was different from the usual. She was always putting up a cold front and a strict tone, so it was surprising to see this side of her. He guessed that she was like that because she was seriously taking the responsibility of a class representative in the institute. Suddenly, a group of people appeared before them. Those people were wearing leather armor and pants. They were also armed with sharp weapons. They were bandits without a doubt. Soda just looked at these bandits without saying anything. In fact, he knew that a lot of people were coming in this direction but he got distracted when he listened to Lumalia and Cluster's conversation. Brian, Yuko, Lumalia, Fred, Juzman, and Cluster stopped moving. They turned their heads to look at the bandits. Lumalia glared at the bandits. Who are you? She opened her mouth and asked them in a cold tone completely different from the one she used on Cluster. The bandits looked at them with a grin on their face. They looked at them as if they were prey that fell in their traps. Oh. The leader of the bandit stepped forward and looked at Lumalia with lewd eyes. He didn't even bother hiding his desire. From the looks of it, you're a noble, right? What if I am? Lumalia replied in a cold tone. She placed her hand on the handle of her sword. We're finally going to enjoy some noble after a long time, boys. The leader said as he looked at Lumalia up and down. Yeah. Boss, at least let me enjoy the maid first. Boss. That little girl, can you give her to me? I have a thing for little girl. The bandits said in a burst of laughter. They already think that the girls here were their property. Soda looked at the bandit leader and Lumalia. He doesn't know what got the bandit leader's interest in Lumalia. Is it a body? No. Lumalia's boobs were close to non-existence and she doesn't have that great curves. If Soda was to say it, Lumalia looks like a child, a lolly to be precise. Soda would prefer the maid over Lumalia. He could see the curves in those well-endowed chests of her through the maid outfit. He shook his head and removed those thoughts in his mind. He looked at Brian and thought that he should teach reality to him. Okay, I will show him how to handle a situation like this, so he wouldn't make any mistake again. Soda thought as he nodded to himself. Soda knew how Brian think, so he guessed that Brian would let these bandits go. Ah how shallow. You started it, Brian said as his mana flared up. He clenched his fist gathering his mana around it. Otto, don't you see that you're at disadvantage here? We have numbers here. You can't hope to defeat us. The bandit leader said with an amused expression. We're going to slowly enjoy those girls, right boys? Yeah, this scum. Juzman gritted her teeth as she pulled out her sword. Stand back, young miss. I will protect you, Fred said as he stepped forward in front of Lumalia. You don't have to worry about me, Fred. I can protect myself, Lumalia said as she pulled out her sword. Humph, a sneered sounded. All of them looked at Soda who stood up while patting his clothes. I'm grateful. Just like what the maid said before, you're just a lowlife scum. Soda looked at the bandits and slowly approached them. He stopped in front of the bandit leader. So, Brian, Yuko, Cluster, Lumalia, Fred, and Juzman just followed Soda with their eyes. Huh? The bandit leader placed his hand on his ear as if he couldn't hear what Soda was saying. I will not have any seconds in killing you. The Vajra Sword Saya in Soda's hand emitted a red aura. Cross moon. Swoosh. A red light flashed and everyone saw a red line in the body of the bandits. Thud. 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 Slowly their upper body fell down on the ground. The face of the bandits showed an expression of shock. It seems that they couldn't believe what happened to them. Spurt. The lower body spurted out fountains of blood in the midair. The whole area was dyed in a blood red color. Cluster was terrified when she saw the bloody scene. She quickly turned around and covered her ears. Ayak. Justin felt a little dizzy witnessing such a gore scene. She's just a maid that have knowledge about fighting, 
So she hadn't seen someone kill people like this. He's not an ordinary student. From his reaction, I could see that it's not his first time killing people. Fred narrowed his eyes as he looked fiercely at Soda. Lumalia subconsciously took a step back while she covered her mouth with her hands. She didn't dare to make any sound as she was afraid of Soda. Soda ignored them as sheathed the Vajra sword. It was his first time using the skill of his sword. It feels different from using the skill he learned. Soda closed his eyes and heard a sound in his mind. Ding! Experience points reached. You've level up. Strength attributes have increased by 8. Intelligence, agility, dexterity, and vitality attributes have increased by 5. You've received 2 free attribute points. You've received 1 skill point. Finally, Soda reached level 19. Just one more level and he will reach the level requirement for the second evolution. Soda. Brian walked towards Soda and grabbed his collar. Hmm. Soda looked at Brian with plain eyes. He saw that Brian was clearly angry at what he did to the bandits. Why? He asked in a plain tone. There's not a hint of emotion in his voice. Why did you kill them? Brian asked him in a loud voice. You know the reason why? Soda replied as he shook his body and fell on the ground. But. You don't have to kill them. Brian said as he gritted his teeth and clenched his fists tightly. Is that what you always do in your quest? When you met a bandit did you always let them live? Soda said stood up while patting his clothes. He turned to look at Brian's eyes and continued, You know that the bandits you let go before didn't stop in what they are doing. Because of you they killed and more people, you know? But. Brian lowered his eyes. Soda narrowed his eyes when looking at Brian. He then sighed and shrugged his shoulder. Okay, let's go now. Brian's attitudes didn't really bother him. In fact, he actually liked it. This kind of attitude was the one that would lead him in getting more quest. Like before, if Brian didn't insist on helping Cluster then Soda wouldn't know about the Great War. He's just testing if he could influence Brian easily. But it seems that's not necessary for him. Soda decided that he will do things in the shadows secretly. Soda turned to Lumalia and asked, You class rep, what are you going to do? Um. Young miss, we should go now. This man is dangerous. I don't like that feeling. Jewsman whispered to Lumalia. Young miss, we should ask him for help. His strength would help us in a lot of ways. Fred whispered. Fred and Jewsman have different opinions. One was afraid of Soda because of what he did, while one thought of taking advantage of Soda's strength. Young miss, if we don't get it, you know what will the Lord say? Fred continued to persuade her. Lumalia frowned when she remembered her father, the family head of the Osvair's noble family. She gritted her teeth and slowly opened her mouth. Um. S. Soda. Hmm. What is it? Soda titled his head with a confused expression. Um. I want to ask you, if you can help us. Lumalia stuttered. She wasn't used in asking other people for help. A. Speak clearly. Soda sighed. Fred was the one who stepped forward and bowed his head. We request you if you can lend us your strength to get the mystical light cherry. Hmm? Ding. Quest triggered. Gathering. Colon help Lumalia's group in acquiring the mystical light cherry. Rewards. 20,000 exp. 10 free attribute points. 5 skill points. Soda was surprised when he received a quest. Gathering. Colon help Lumalia's group in acquiring the mystical light cherry. Rewards. 20,000 exp. 10 free attribute points. 4 skill points. 4 skill points. Soda was surprised to see 4 skill points as rewards. The difficulty of this quest was clearly higher than all the quests that he did before. He turned his head and looked at Lumalia's group. He wondered if he should accept the quest or not. Accepting the quest means that he wouldn't acquire the mystical light cherry, but he would get 4 skill points. That's a lot of skill points. Okay, I'll help you but first you have to help me first. Soda nodded at them and stated his condition. If he hadn't asked them anything in return then they would grow suspicious of him. Thanks for accepting our selfish request, but I have a question, Fred said politely. Do tell me, Soda said in response to him. How should we help you? Fred asked carefully. Hmm. We will enter the dungeon later and just protect Cluster. Soda said as he rubbed his chin. Is that all? Fred took a glance at Cluster and asked Soda. Yeah, Brian and I will become too busy in fighting so we need someone to protect Cluster. Then, I'm curious about this red fur bear. Ah. Her? She's Yuko, my partner. Yuko say hi to them. Mew. Soda turned his head and looked at Brian. Brian was looking on the ground while his fists clenched tightly. Soda approached him and patted his back. He said, don't worry about it, I'm just testing you if you're going to change your perspective in life. But don't worry, that okay, just do what you think is right. Soda left after he said those words to Brian. Yuko looked at Brian before she followed Soda. Cluster lifted up her head and looked at Yuko and Soda's back. Then, she turned her head and looked at Brian. 
Soda talked about the detailed information of the mystical light cherry to Lumalia. Soda, Lumalia, Fred, and Jewsmen were around the map of the desolate woods. They were looking at the map with a serious expression. Where is the exact place of the fruit? Soda asked. We don't know the exact place but the fruit was said to be seen in this part, Lumalia said as she drew circle a small part of the northern woods. Soda looked at the map with a scrutinizing gaze. After a few moments, he opened his mouth and said, we should go around this part to avoid the nest titan hornets. We shouldn't use our energy in fighting these monsters as we need to fight the other people that came here for the fruit. Other people? Lumalia looked at Soda. Huh? Do you think that you're the only one who came here for the fruit? There are people who came here with the same reason as you. They are competitors. We have to fight and defeat them if you want to get the mystical light cherry. Soda said in a cold tone. Yeah. Lumalia lowered her head and nodded. Soda guessed that Lumalia didn't know anything at all. She just came here because she heard about the mystical light cherry. She didn't even bring knights in her quest like the other nobles that came here. A. Hey, Soda sighed helplessly. It seems that Lumalia was innocent in outside world affairs. To think that the strict class rep didn't know this. It seems like he overestimated her. Okay. Let's finish what we came here first, Soda said as he stood up. Thanks. Fred also stood up and thanked Soda. You can save your thanks after we get that fruit. Soda glanced at him and said before he left. Lumalia, Fred, and Juzman looked at his back. Is he really your classmate, young miss? Justin asked Lumalia in a low voice. Yeah, from what I see he's the strongest in our class. Lumalia nodded. Young miss, if I'm not wrong your class is mage class, am I right? Fred asked. Yes. We're from mage class, he showed a power not befitting any mage in our class. He even defeated the students from shield class without using any spells. Lumalia explained to them. The group walked for an hour before they arrived near in front of the waterfalls. Is this where the dungeon resides? Brian asked as he looked at the 40 meter tall falls. Yeah, it's behind that falls. Soda nodded as he observed Brian. It seems that Brian recovered now. His mental capacity was high and it looks like he experienced the same thing before. Soda doesn't know what Brian experienced before that made him like that. Brian seems vent on saving everyone that needs help. Soda looked at Cluster and said, Cluster, stay behind Lumalia. She will protect you. Cluster nodded her head and she stood beside Lumalia. Lumalia looked at Cluster and patted her head. Don't worry, I will protect you. Thank you. Cluster nodded meekly. Follow me, Soda said as he stepped forward and let the water fell on his body. The rest of the group followed Soda behind. Behind the waterfalls, they saw a wide cave. It was so wide that Yuko could move inside the cave freely. Everyone's clothes were wet because of the waterfalls. Brian looked around and saw Juzman's bra through her maid outfit. When he saw her bra, he quickly turned around and looked deep in the dungeon. Soda noticed it so he looked at the girls and said, You should dry your clothes first. Brian couldn't even concentrate when you're showing such things to him. Lumalia, Cluster, and Juzman looked at their body and saw that their wet clothes were sticking close in their body. Young miss, Fred exclaimed as he removed his coat and placed it on Lumalia. Thank you, Fred, Lumalia said with a hint of redness in her cheeks as she glanced at Brian and she saw him looking at the cave, then at Soda, and saw him looking at her. You. You. What? I couldn't even see what's there even if you don't hide it. Soda said to her. You. Lumalia blushed and she didn't even know what to say anymore. Young miss is still in her growing phase, so she would grow into a fine woman after a few years. Juzman stepped forward and said while looking at him fiercely. Then, complain to me after a few years or after she got the same body as yours, Soda said as he turned around and shrugged his shoulder. Juzman covered her chest with her hands when she heard Soda's words. Yuko stepped forward and stuck out her tongue. She licked Soda's cheeks. Stop that. I will give you some fruit. Soda said as he patted Yuko's head. He placed his other hand on his bag and took out a fruit. He gave the fruit to her so that she would stop. He then walked beside Brian and placed his hand on Brian's shoulder. He placed his mouth near Brian's ear and whispered, After this quest, you should come with me to the red light district, I will pick the best woman for you. I Brian was about to decline when Soda interrupted him. Don't worry it's my treat. Soda patted Brian's shoulder. The group went inside the dungeon. Soda lit up a torch and he let the non-combatants hold the torch. The area inside the cave was wide so they were not cramped in a small narrow path like any other dungeons. The road was dark and they could barely see what's inside the cave. After walking for a few minutes, they saw crystals on the ceiling that was emitting light. Beautiful, Juzman exclaimed when she saw the crystals on the ceiling. Yeah, it's pretty. Brian nodded at her words. Soda didn't have any reaction except that he thought that these crystals were convenient. These crystals were nothing compared to the crystals that lit up the undead sanctuary. 
Soto looked behind him and said, you can throw the torches, we don't need them anymore. Soto knew that at this point they didn't need the torches. Okay. Cluster nodded and she threw the torch that she was holding. She was a non-combatant so Soda gave her a task before to hold the torch. Humph. Jewsman also threw the torch that she was holding. Also, be careful, Soda warned them as he knew that they will meet monsters when they go deeper in the dungeon. Brian, Lumalia, and Fred nodded at his words. They prepared themselves to fight the monsters. Soon, they met three giant snakes. The snakes were 10 meters long and they have green scales. Let's kill it quickly, Soda said as he pulled out the Vajra sword. Okay. Fred nodded at him. Soda and Brian charged towards the three giant snakes, and Fred followed behind the two. Swoosh. Swoosh. The snakes attacked Soda but he easily avoided it. Bang. He then slashed his sword at the snakes. His sword easily broke through the scales of the snake. Puchi. Red blood spurted out of the cut he gave to the snake. Soda then jumped in the air and he twisted his body. He followed it up by waving his sword towards the head of the snake. Puchi. The snake was cut into two cleanly. Brian pulled back his fist and he gathered his mana. Boom. He jumped in through a powerful punch on the head of the giant snake. Bang. He landed on the ground and flames coated both of his fist. He bent his knees and threw himself at the snake. Blazing strike. Boom. The snake was pushed back. It took damage from that punch. Suddenly, Brian saw a sword flew in the air straight to the eye of the snake. Puchi. The sword pierced through the eye of the snake and Soda appeared. Soda grabbed the handle of the sword and he pushed it deeper. Soda turned around and saw that Lumalia and Fred already finished the other giant snake. Let's go now. Soda took a glance at the corpses of the giant snake before he started to walk. He could sell them but he doesn't have enough hand to bring them back to the village. Even then, the giant snake was too large for him and it would take a lot of people to bring back a single giant snake. Also, he wouldn't get much coins if he sells this type of snake. Okay. The rest of the group followed Soda. They didn't know what's Soda's goal here so they could only follow him. Fred even asked Brian what's Soda's goal, but even he didn't know what's Soda's objective here in this dungeon. The group continued going deeper into the dungeon. They only stopped when they saw two pathways in front of them. What should we do now, Soda? Brian asked Soda. Lumalia, Fred, Jewsman, and Cluster also turned to look at him. Soda rubbed his chin and closed his eyes. He tried to recall the right way here. Hmm. Where should I go? After a few moments, Soda opened his eyes. He finally recalled what's in these two pathways. These two pathways lead to the boss's room. There's not that much different except the type of monster. The monsters on the left side was an undead while on the right side was not undead. Let's go this way. Soda pointed at the left path. Okay. Brian nodded at him. Lumalia, Fred, and Jewsman don't have that much opinion regarding this matter. They will all leave this to Soda. There's a reason why he chooses the left path full of undead creatures. A spell book was hidden in the secret room here in the left path and Soda wanted it. He could sell the spell book for a huge amount of money after he learned the spell. It will give him an allowance for two months. The group entered a wide space and saw more than 50 undead blocking the way. The atmosphere turned into a cold one completely different from before. The smell of rotten meat spread in the air. Lumalia, Jewsman, and Cluster pinched the nose when they smelled it. Soda took a deep breath and clenched his sword tightly. The atmosphere here was the same when he entered one of the low-level dungeons in the undead sanctuary. The scent and cold air were the same. Let's go. Soda shouted as he dashed towards the group of undead. Although they were low-level undead he would still get a decent amount of exp if he killed them. Gra. The undead noticed him, so they turned their attention at him. All of them opened their mouth revealing sharp fangs. Swoosh. Soda arrived in front of them and he used the skill, stab, consecutively. Bang. 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 Several small holes appeared in the bodies of the undead in front of him. Brian jumped above Soda. Brian's fists were covered in flames. Blazing strike. Brian threw a powerful punch causing a huge explosion to occur in the back. Fred looked at Soda and Brian. He opened his mouth and said, I'll go, young miss. He then brandished his sword and charged towards the group of undead. Swoosh. Swoosh. He swiftly moved his body from side to side hole dodging every undead. He did this while waving his sword to cut the undead. Puchi. Puchi. Soda stopped attacking the undead when he saw Fred. He was surprised at Fred's sword skill. Fred's mastery over the sword was higher than him. As expected of a butler of a noble family. He clearly possesses some skill to prove himself. Now that Soda thought about it, he recalled that when he threw his Vajra sword before, Fred reacted quickly to parry his sword. Soda turned his head to look at Lumalia and the rest. 
Lumalia was standing in front of Cluster and Juzman while holding her sword in front of her. If some undead passes through Brian and Fred, she was the one who's going to fight it. Soda slightly bent his knees and launched himself towards the group of undead. Let's go, Saya. He waved the Vajra sword left and right cutting the bodies of the undead like a butter. He was getting impatient because the undead kept coming. Get down, Soda shouted and Fred and Brian looked at him. They quickly got crouched down in response to his words. Cross moon, Soda executed one of the skills of the Vajra sword Saya. Swoosh. A red light swept out in the whole area and it cut every undead in front of Soda. The system prompt kept ringing in his head. Huff. There's still more. Soda inhaled deeply and shouted. He once again dashed towards the remaining undead in the back. Brian and Fred also joined the fight. It took them a dozen minutes before they cleared all the undead in this area. The undead have numbers more than Soda estimated. At first, only 50 undead appeared but as the fight goes on the undead kept appearing until they reached more than 100 in numbers. That's a lot of undead, Fred commented while looking at the dead bodies. Soda glanced at the girls and saw Juzman was covering Cluster's eyes. He opened his mouth and said, ignore it if you can't stomach it. Lumalia nodded at his words. Let's get going, Juzman. The group went deeper. They met undead in their way but its number was not the same as before. After half an hour of walking, Soda and the rest arrived in the middle part of the dungeon. The area here was wider and there's a lot of undead here. Soda, Brian, and Fred worked together to get rid of all the undead in the place. It took them 10 minutes to completely finish all the undead. Soda looked at his group and saw that they were showing signs of exhaustion, so he let them rest here for a while. Rest here, Soda said to them. He then walked around the area. Lumalia looked around the area and noticed a huge metal door at the side. What's with that door? Lumalia asked. Soda walked towards it and placed his palm on the cold surface of the door. Behind this door was the spell book that he wanted. On top of the huge metal door, was a line with a red light. It looks like a bar and the red light was the power that operated the mechanism inside the door. Brian also walked towards the metal door. He pushed the door with all of his might but the door didn't budge an inch. I can't open it. Brian said and he tried to punch the door. Bang! His punch didn't even leave a dent on the door. You wouldn't be able to open the door inside the dungeon easily, Soda said to Brian. Cluster also walked towards the door and placed her palm on the surface of the door. Cluster! Juzman called her but Cluster ignored her. Lumalia and Fred looked at Cluster with a curious expression. Soda noticed that Cluster's eyes were lifeless. It was different from her usual expression. It feels like someone was taking over her body and controlling her. He took a step back and observed her. He wondered what she will do and he was also curious about the secret she's hiding. A magic circle appeared in her palm. Then, the red bar above the door shone brightly before they heard the metallic sound inside the door indicating that she opened the door. Cluster suddenly loses her consciousness. She fell down and Brian, who was beside her, caught her before she landed. Bang! The huge metal door slowly opened and revealed a dark room. What? Soda was shocked when he saw this. The way she opened the door was different from what he knew. How did she do that? He tried to recall if there's another way to open the door but unfortunately, he couldn't think of anything. The only way to open this door was to fill the red bar using the bodies of the undead. But Cluster did it in her own way. How? Soda doesn't have any ideas on how she did that. He stepped forward and looked at Cluster on Brian's arms. He checked her pulse and found that she was just unconscious. What happened, Soda? Brian asked him while looking at Cluster with a hint of concern in his eyes. She's fine. You don't have to worry about her. Soda said to him. He then entered the dark room behind the door. He used his fireball spell to create light. The light from the fireball illuminated the whole room. Soda saw a bunch of equipment on the ground. The grade of the equipment ranges from colorless to blue grade. The one that caught his attention was the normal looking chest at the back of the room. This thing was hiding the spell book that he wanted. Okay, let's check it out, Soda said as he stepped forward. Soda squatted down and placed his hands on the side of the chest before he opened it. Inside the chest, he saw a thick black book. The book looks ordinary and it doesn't have any titles indicating what's written inside this book. The Undead Light Spell A spell where he could shot a dark light. If the target was undead, they will only lose their energy. But if it's not undead, the target will lose their life force and the life force will go to the user. And if the target died using the skill, then the target will become undead. The user will be able to use the life force he or she collected to increase the damage of his slasher attack and defense. The spell can only target one person at a time. It will increase by leveling up the skill. It also cannot be used while using another spell. Soda smiled looking at the spell book on his hand. This spell was a tier 2 spell. 
It means that he couldn't use his skill points to learn this skill as he only had a low level class. Tier 2 spell was for those who have mid level class and tier 3 spell was for those who have high level class. But Soda didn't have a plan to use skill points to learn this skill. He will try to learn it manually. After he learned the spell, he would also try if he could imprint it in his inner consciousness making it an inner spell just like the rest of his spell. Soda, what's that? Lumalia asked him from behind. Soda glanced at her and said, it's a spell book. Hmm. Is that the reason why you came here? Lumalia nodded and asked. Nope, I don't even know that this spell is here in the first place, Soda answered her. He said this because he wanted her to know that he doesn't have any idea about what's inside this room. It will be suspicious if he knew what's inside the locked door. I see. So what's your reason? Lumalia nodded and asked what's his objective in this place. The rotten venomous green apple, Soda replied. Since they were already here and they will know his goal when they arrived in the boss room, Soda decided to tell her. Did real venomous green apple grow here? Lumalia asked him with wide eyes. She heard about the venomous green apple, so she had an idea about it. Then, something came into her mind. Rotten? Yeah, it decayed because of the negative energy of the undead that is guarding the venomous green apple. That's the reason why it became a rotten venomous green apple. Soda explained to her. That's unfortunate, Lumalia said as she lowered her head. She knew that the value of the venomous green apple was greater than the mystical light cherry, but since it was a rotten one the value became less than the cherry. Well, the client still wants it so what could I do? Soda shrugged his shoulder. I see. Lumalia recalled that Brian said that they came here because of the quest. Clap. Soda clapped his hand to gather everyone's attention and said, You can pick anything that you wanted here. We could bring all of this equipment so pick the thing that you only want. Lumalia, Fred, and Juzman just stayed in their place. They were not interested in some blue-grade equipment. But Brian was different, he wasn't a noble and he didn't have money to buy his own set of equipment. All the money he earned was for paying the institute. Brian was excited when he saw a lot of equipments on the ground. He went around to look at the equipment with an excited expression. You can pick anything you want Brian. You can also sell it. Soda advised to Brian. Okay. Brian nodded as he continued to check every equipment on the floor. Soda looked around and picked up some blue grade equipment. He then called Yuko and hung those equipments in her back. Good. We will earn a few hundred gold coins for these equipments. Soda nodded with a satisfied expression. Soda looked at his stats and saw that, Harvester of the Soul, only need a few more souls before he could use its effect once again. The souls of the monsters, bandits, and the undead that he killed before almost filled the bar. Just a little bit more and his stats would increase once again. His base stats were mostly in balance right now. His strength attribute would increase than any of his attributes because he picked it when he evolved into high-end goblin. His agility and dexterity attributes were catching up because of the, Harvester of the Soul and his intelligence attributes were also increasing because of his class. The only thing he lacks was the skill to increase his vitality attributes. The group waited for Cluster to regain her consciousness. She woke up after 30 minutes since she opened the door. Soda didn't ask her how she managed to open the door because he thought that Cluster doesn't have any idea about that. Even if she knew that side of her, she will keep silent about it because she already hid why those people from before were after her. Naturally, she doesn't want to talk about it. Lumalia also didn't ask about it. Since she didn't ask about, naturally Fred and Juzman wouldn't ask too. Brian was different. He was just amazed and praised Cluster because she managed to open the door that he couldn't open. Okay, we will go now, Soda said to them while glancing at Cluster. Cluster was beside Juzman still feeling weak. It seems that she exhausted her strength in opening the door. Soda then looked at Juzman. You stay beside Cluster. He planned to quickly kill the boss, the undead Cyclops, with this group. He, Brian, Yuko, Lumalia, and Fred will attack the boss. He knew how powerful the boss, so even with this group it would take some time. Yeah. I will protect her. Juzman nodded and she patted Cluster's head. Good. Soda nodded. Soda led them to the boss room. Their journey wasn't smooth as they met some undead on their way to the boss room, since all of them were fighting except for Cluster and Juzman they easily eliminated those undead. Half an hour later they arrived in front of a wide space. The area of the boss room was wider than any other part of the dungeon here. The distance between the ceiling and the floor was 25 meters. Soda and the rest looked inside and saw a 5 meter tall undead standing in the center of the room. This was the boss of this dungeon, the undead Cyclops. Beside the undead Cyclops was a tall rock and on top of it was a small tree without any leaf. They saw only saw one fruit which was hanging in one of its branches. So that's the venomous green apple. Juzman said in wonder while looking at the green apple. Yeah, and that's my goal. Soda nodded and turned his attention to Yuko. 
He approached her and took the equipments that were hanging on her back. He then placed it on the ground. He did this so that Yuko could fight without restraint. Juzman, stay out of the fight, Lumalia said to Juzman. Yes, young miss. Juzman nodded at her. You can go now, Soda said as he patted Yuko's back. Roar. Yuko roared and she charged towards the undead Cyclops. The undead Cyclops noticed her so it turned its body and faced Yuko. Boom. The two clashed causing a loud sound that echoed in the whole room. Here I go. Brian clenched his fist as he bent his knees and charged towards the undead Cyclops. Lumalia closed her eyes and she gathered her mana in her palm. She then casted a spell towards the undead Cyclops. Water blade. A blade made of water shot towards the back of the undead Cyclops. Bang. 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 Shadow bind. Soda also used his spell to restrict the movements of the undead Cyclops. Bang. 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 Fred also charged as he joined Brian and Yuko in battling the undead Cyclops. While Lumalia and Soda provided them support using their spells. Agility boost. Strength boost. Soda casted his support spell on Brian, Fred, and Yuko. He looked at them before he pulled out the Vajra Sword Saya on his waist. He looked at Lumalia and said, I will join them. You can continue supporting us using your magic. Lumalia nodded and she casted Water Bomb spell. Brian, Fred, and Yuko took a distance away from the undead Cyclops and Lumalia's spell exploded. Boom. Continue, Soda shouted. He knew that the undead Cyclops wouldn't die that easily. The boss was a powerful undead. It possessed the power to carry the level of this dungeon higher than the low-level dungeon, so it wouldn't die easily. They nodded at him before they launched themselves at the boss of this dungeon. Quest triggered. Boss battle. Colon defeat the boss and conquer the dungeon. Rewards. 5000 exp. 2 free attribute points, and 1 skill point. The rewards of this quest were higher than the previous quest he did in the dungeon. It was because the level of this dungeon wasn't entirely a low-level dungeon. Its level hover between the low-level and mid-level dungeons. Hmm. I will get another skill points that's what matters. Soda smiled. Bang. 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 A loud sound echoed in the whole room as Yuko exchanged blows with the undead Cyclops. Yuko was getting pushed back by the power of the undead Cyclops when Brian appeared above her and shot a powerful punch at the enemy. Blazing strike. Brian's flaming fist hit the face of the undead Cyclops. The undead was pushed back a little bit by his punch. Swoosh. The undead waved its hand towards Brian but Yuko blocked it for him. Bang. Thanks, Yuko. Brian smiled and he casted, lightning boots, and, lightning edge, spell. Bang. 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 Fred moved behind the undead and executed his own combat arts. Rippling slash. White energy coated his sword before he swung it at the back of the undead cyclops. Puchi. A large cut appeared on the back of the undead. The undead felt the power of the slash, so it turned around and shot a kick towards Fred. Fred noticed it, so he quickly reacted by moving his body sideways. He avoided the kick and launched a counterattack. Rippling slash. He slashed the feet of the undead Cyclops. Puchi. Suddenly, the undead Cyclops roared in a very loud voice. The roar shook the entire area. Roar. Brian and Fred covered their ears as both of them took a step back. Damn, it's crazy strong. Brian looked at the undead Cyclops with eagerness in his eyes. Let me try it for a second. Soda looked at Brian when he heard those words. He nodded and called Yuko. Stay back, let Brian hold the undead for a while. Are you sure? Fred went beside Soda and asked. Soda just nodded his head while looking at the undead Cyclops. The undead Cyclops started to emit its strange black energy. It was color black and everyone could see the energy with their own eyes. It then gathered the energy in its eye. Boom. It formed a ball of black energy and it was getting stronger every second. Boom. The black energy shot a beam towards them. Get down, Soda said as he pushed Fred to avoid the black beam at all costs. Brian also jumped away to dodge the beam. Lumalia took Juzman and Cluster with her. Boom. A loud explosion that shook the entire room occurred. Thick smoke and dust covered the area of the explosion. Some of the crystals on the ceiling started to fall down. It looks like the entire place was going to crumble down. Soda knew that this place wasn't going to crumble with just one attack of that level. This place was built to hold the boss here, so it could even take the strongest blow the boss could give. What power? Fred exclaimed looking at the explosion. Water barrier. Lumalia casted a barrier to protect Cluster and Juzman from the falling debris. Damn, what a strong one. Brian charged towards the undead Cyclops without hesitation. He jumped in the air and aimed his palm on the undead. Thundershock. 
Lightning Ground, Glowing Flame. Brian casted his attacking spell at the undead Cyclops. Flames and lightning appeared one after another and it looks like it was going to devour the undead. The undead Cyclops ignored the damage it took and attacked Brian. It launched a barrage of punches towards him. Bang! 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 Brian swiftly avoided all the punches of the undead with his speed. He clenched his fist tightly and he jumped towards the face of the undead. Swoosh! Brian smirked and casted a powerful spell. Burst flame. Boom. Whoa. That packs a lot of power. Soda exclaimed looking at Brian's show of power. To think that Brian holds this much power was something he didn't expect. Soda would say that Brian with mana and spell was five times stronger than the Brian in the tournament. Soda shook his head and said, but that's enough now, let's go. He patted Yuko and let her join the fight. Suddenly, Lumalia shouted from behind. Back down. Brian heard her voice so he took a distance from the undead Cyclops. Yuko who just joined the fight was forced to back down. Water Serpent. A huge serpent made of water formed behind Lumalia. Lumalia pointed her fingers at the undead Cyclops and she controlled the serpent to attack the undead. Swoosh. The serpent's speed was high as it quickly arrived before the undead. The serpent moved above before it got down and clashed on the face of the undead. Boom. Follow up. Water Bomb. Water Blade. Lumalia showed her powerful spells. The power of her spell could be compared to Brian's spell. She then crouched down and placed both of her palms on the ground. Greater Ice Spike. Spike made of ice burst out of the ground. The area of effect of this skill could cover the whole space of this room, but she didn't do it because she had her comrades here. The spike pierced the huge body of the undead Cyclops. Whoa! You're crazy strong too, class rep, Brian exclaimed in a loud voice. Boom! Suddenly, the spikes were shattered like a fragile glass. All of them focused their sight on the undead Cyclops. The undead was releasing a very powerful aura right now. The aura caused ripples in the air. The undead Cyclops' body expanded and it became 7 meters tall. Its eye turned red in color and red veins started to pop up around its body. What's that? Juzman looked at the undead Cyclops. She was worried about the one who's fighting such a monster. It still have so much power, Fred exclaimed as he covered his eyes with his hand. TCH. A good one. Brian clicked his tongue when he saw that the undead Cyclops still holds a power they couldn't expect. Lumalia just looked at the undead as she bit her lower lips. Soda knew what's that. It's the, Berserk Mode, skill of the undead Cyclops. It will activate when its health goes down to one-fourth. It's our time, Yuko, Soda shouted and he waved his sword. Roar. Yuko roared and charged towards the undead Cyclops in response to his words. Soda followed behind Yuko and he used, Dash, to increase his speed. He also used, Agility Boost, and Strength Boost, on himself. Swoosh. He jumped above Yuko and looked at the undead Cyclops. He aimed his sword at the undead and executed, stab, consecutively. Bang! 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 The undead Cyclops felt the power of his attack, so it turned its attention on him. It swung its huge arm towards him. Soda smirked as he gripped his sword tightly. He then executed the skill of the, Vajra Sword Saya, Cross Moon. The red light of the Vajra Sword and the huge hand of the undead Cyclops collided. Boom! Blood burst out of the hand of the undead. The flesh of its hand slowly crumbled under the power of the Vajra sword. Soda then twisted his body in the air and swung his sword. Puchi. The huge hand of the undead Cyclops fell down on the ground with a loud thud sound. At this time, Yuko arrived in front of the undead. She increased her speed and tackled the huge undead in front of her. Bang! She then moved both of her hands and smashed the undead Cyclops. Bang! 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 Yuko saw that her attack wasn't doing any damage to the undead, so she opened her mouth and a ball of fire formed. Burning shout. A flame swept out in the whole area and it almost hit Soda. Soda was shocked when he saw this. It was his first time seeing Yuko used her trait skill. He smiled and said, Good girl, Yuko, keep it up. After a few moments, Yuko stopped her trait skill. Soda saw the area was burned and the undead Cyclops was still moving. Although it was moving, Soda knew that it would fall any time. He dashed towards it and waved his sword like a madman. Slice. Slash. He only stopped when he heard a sound in his mind. You've received 1891 exp from defeating the undead Cyclops. Congratulations on completing the mission boss battle. You've received 5000 exp. You've received 2 free attribute points. You've received 1 skill point. It's done. Soda said as the undead Cyclops fell in the ground. He checked the system first before he went up to the tall rock. 
He picked up the rotten venomous green apple and placed it inside a container. That's mission complete, Brian said as he walked towards Soda. Yeah, thanks. Soda nodded and thanked him. He packed the container inside his bag. I hope you don't forget what you promised to young miss, Fred said at the side. Don't worry, I will help you. Soda grinned at him. He wouldn't abandon a mission that will give him five skill points. Soda packed the container inside his bag. He stood up and said, you can rest here. After we rest, we will head to get the mystical light cherry for class rep. Brian and Fred nodded at him. They sat down and tried to recover their energy as fast as possible. How about you? Juzman asked him. Me, I'm going to see what's this undead, Soda said as he walked towards the undead Cyclops. Lumalia just looked at him before she closed her eyes. Soda sat down in front of the undead Cyclops and sliced a piece of its meat. He placed it inside the other container that he bought. It's one of the requirements for his next evolution, the meat of the level 20 and above undead. Now that he acquired all the materials needed for his next evolution, the only thing he needed was to level up to 20. He doesn't need to worry about that now as his priority was to complete Lumalia's quest. The rewards of her quest were the highest all of the quests he received ever since he came here in this world. He will undergo evolution once he finished this quest. After that, he will focus on leveling up his class. Currently, he was just a rank 1 mage. To promote to rank 2 mage, he needed to level up once of his specialty to level 10. Leveling up a spell was completely different from leveling up a combat arts like his, stab, skill. It was different from combat arts that could be trained to level up. The spell was made up of a magic circle. He needed to know how to build up a magic circle without relying on his system. This was the reason why he enrolled in the Ladro Institute. The group rested inside the boss room for almost an hour. They recovered some of their energy in this time, so Soda lead them out of the dungeon. Oh that undead was crazy strong, Brian said after they got out the dungeon. Don't worry about it, you have the potential to surpass it, Soda commented. Lumalia agreed at him. She knew that Brian had four affinities and only powerful people possessed four affinities. In the future, Brian would become one too with proper training. Okay, prepare yourself. Our opponent this time isn't some mindless undead. Soda clapped and said. The battle this time will be hard, harder than conquering the dungeon, so be prepared. The nobles from both Hebrae Kingdom and Melosa Country will be our opponents. Also, some of the high-level adventurers will be there to get the mystical light cherry. Lumalia, Fred, and Juzman nodded with a gloomy expression. They knew that it will become a fierce battle if the nobles from other countries were involved in this fight. Bring it on, Brian said with a smile. He was excited to fight strong people from another country. But something is strange here, Soda said as he looked around. Something is strange? Brian looked at Soda with a questioning gaze. Soda looked at them and asked, Are any of you familiar with this forest? No, this is my first time here. Brian shook his head. We came here before but we didn't enter this deep, Fred said. Soda nodded in understanding. He opened his mouth and said, In the books, they said that we shouldn't enter the inner part of the desolate woods if we don't have enough strength. Yeah, why? Juzman nodded and asked. In this part of the forest, there's a lot of powerful monsters. Two types of these monsters even possess a monster orb. So why we haven't met those monsters? Soda carefully said to them. Do you mean? Fred looks like he understood what Soda was saying. Yeah, I think someone with enough power came here and killed those monsters, Soda said. But, why? Mystical Light Cherry is nothing to someone that powerful. Fred asked. I don't know their reason but it seems that we need to be extra careful in getting the Mystical Light Cherry, Soda said. Fred looked at Lumalia and asked, Young Miss, what should we do? Lumalia lowered her head. She was having a hard time deciding what to do. She couldn't let Fred and Juzman to be put in danger because of her decision. Don't worry, Young Miss. No matter what you do I will support you. Juzman said, And me too. Don't worry about me. I don't want you to worry about me. I can run any time and I'm confident about this. Cluster slowly raised her hand and said meekly. Soda smiled looking at them. He opened his mouth and said, Don't worry about it. When the time comes, I will do anything to get that mystical light cherry for you. Lumalia lifted up her head and looked at him in the eyes. Ha ha ha. Yeah we will help you. Brian laughed and said. Somewhere in the forest. Ah where's the one that will become a sacrifice for our god? Julia said while looking around at his surroundings. We will arrive there soon. Carmilla replied to him. These two people were the commandments of the gods will cult. They came here to retrieve the body of a certain god from ancient times. They didn't know have much information about that god as a lot of information about the ancient era was gone. Only a few pieces of information were passed down and a lot of people treated that information as a sacred treasure. For the love of our god, we must complete this mission as soon as possible. Julia said. Naturally, we couldn't afford to fail this mission, Carmilla said. 
She then stopped moving and looked in the sky. She opened her mouth and said, someone is coming here. He more sacrifice, Julius said as he opened his arms widely. They didn't even bother hiding their aura. Carmilla smiled. With her power, she could sense people who didn't bother to hide their aura a few kilometers away. Especially, those people clearly had hostility while coming in this direction. So it's not that surprising that she felt those people. Carmilla shook her head and said, they didn't even realize that they will only become a sacrifice if they went here. A middle-aged man was heading towards the desolate woods at a fast speed. The middle-aged man had an angry expression on his face. He has blonde hair that was combed behind his head. His pupils were gleaming with an intent to kill. How dare you kill my son? He said with an angry expression. A few hours ago, he sensed that the life force of his son disappeared in the desolate woods so he quickly flew towards it. He had a special bloodline where he could sense the life force of his descendants and know their location. Those descendants of his could provide him their power through his connection with them. He was going to kill the one who killed his son. He couldn't contain his rage anymore. Back in the dry gulch town. What the hell is this? Head. A lot of nobles died in the inner part of the desolate woods according to some adventurer that went there. The heck. This is bad. The head of the town received a report that a lot of people with backgrounds died in the desolate woods. The head was shocked when he received such reports. Since this town was closest to the desolate woods, the backer of those people would naturally question him about this. He needed to come up a with report and know the truth about their death in the desolate woods. This is getting bad. Something is happening in the desolate woods. The head gritted his teeth. He stood up and looked at his assistant and said, prepare my armor, I will go there myself to investigate it. The assistant nodded and bowed his head before he left. The head looked at his assistant's retreating figure before he walked towards the window and looked at the direction of the desolate woods. Suddenly, he sensed a powerful aura coming to his direction. Hey! They are here. I need to come up with an excuse. He couldn't help but sigh. He knew he was no match about those powerful nobles from large countries. He could only curse those idiot second generation that only relies on their parents. Damn, who would have the guts to kill those idiots? Soda and the rest stood in their place with wide eyes. In front of them were the bodies of dead monsters, demis, and humans. The whole area was dyed in red because of the blood of dead creatures. This? Jusman covered her mouth with her hand. She was shocked by what's in front of her. Young miss. Fred muttered as he turned his head and looked at Lumalia. Lumalia swallowed her saliva. To think that what Soda said before was true. Soda observed the corpses around them and he even saw monsters with a monster orb. There's even a people wearing a knight armor. Ha ha ha, this is bad news. He could only smile wryly at this scene. He had an idea of how powerful the person that could do this violence. What should we do, young miss? Fred asked Lumalia with a concerned tone. I Lumalia hesitated to answer him and when she was about to reply Soda interrupted her. Don't worry, the person who's capable of doing this wouldn't have an interest in a mere mystical light cherry, Soda said. He clearly knew that those powerful people wouldn't get an interest in a fruit that will not give them any benefits. For them, the benefits they will receive from mystical light cherry was close to none. They wouldn't even feel the increase in their strength even if they consumed a dozen of it. What if we met those people? Jusman interjected. What she was worried the most was Lumalia's safety. If we somehow met them, then don't do anything that will get in their nerves. We should just leave them and do nothing. Soda said. As long as they don't offend those people then they would be safe. He could see from this scene that these people didn't die without fighting. These people and monsters all died with one strike on their necks. Although they died with one strike, Soda could see that there's proof of other skill that was launched. Trees were burned and shattered ice was on the ground. In other words, these people attacked first before they died with one strike. As long as we don't attack them then we're good, Soda added. Oh okay. Lumalia nodded then she closed her eyes and took a deep breath. When she opened her eyes, a determination could be seen flashing in her eyes. Soda turned his attention to Brian. He slowly opened his mouth and said, don't do anything, just keep quiet for a while. I know. Brian nodded at him. Ignore those bodies. We will go now. Soda said to them. The group walked for half an hour before they arrived in the part where the mystical light cherry ripened. We're here in the rumored part of the forest where the mystical light cherry ripened, Soda said to the group. Here in this place, there's a chance that people who are after the mystical light cherry will only attack us once we got the cherry in our hands. Okay, I'm itching to fight someone. Brian said with a smirk on his face. Brian, don't start attacking people. We will see first if they are enemies or not. Soda said to Brian sternly. Yeah, if you want to help young miss then do that. Jewsman backed up Soda. I know. Brian smiled awkwardly as he scratched the back of his head. Cluster, stay beside Jewsman. Don't wander around. Soda said to Cluster. 
MN. Don't worry about me. Cluster said in a low voice. She gripped the hem of her clothes while looking at Soda straight in the eyes. Good. Soda smiled when he saw her eyes. It seems that he doesn't need to worry about her. Boom. A loud booming sound echoed in the whole area and it was followed by a huge explosion. Soda, Yuko, Lumalia, Brian, Fred, and Juzman looked up. They saw a huge mushroom of smoke rose up in the air. As expected some people are already fighting for the cherry, Soda muttered. From the looks of it, the battle already started and it looks like it's been a while since it started. There's also a possibility that some people got the mystical light cherry. Let's hurry, Soda said before he started to run towards the direction of the explosion. Yuko followed him without hesitation. Okay. Brian nodded and he also ran towards Soda. Lumalia, Fred, and Juzman looked at each other before they followed behind Soda. Bang. 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 A man wearing a full plate armor was breathing heavily. His armor had a lot of dent and cracks in it. He slowly raised his arm and wiped the blood on his mouth. He took a deep breath and said, they're quite strong, master, I know. I'm having a hard time too, so can you please shut up and focus on killing them? A young man with long black hair said with an annoyed expression. He was a young noble from Alosa country and in front of him were his knights. The one they were fighting were the Wood Eater Apes. The Wood Eater Apes was one meter in height. Although, they weren't that tall their power was something else. Their level was between 20 and 39. It means that these apes already evolved twice. The Wood Eater Apes live in a pack and they were rarely seen alone. Even when they were hunting, they were still forming a group even if their prey was weaker than them. These Wood Eater Apes were the ones that were guarding the mystical light cherry. To get the cherry the humans and Demis needed to defeat the apes and the leader of the pack. The leader of the pack was a powerful ape that already formed its own monster orb. It means that the leader was level 40 and above. Young master, they are too strong. The man in full plate armor said. Shut up, just go and take the fruit. The young man shouted. I understand, young master. The man in full plate armor nodded and raised his sword in the air. He shouted, let's go, guys. Soda and the rest hid in the bushes. They observed the fight between these knights and apes. Soda was quite shocked when he found that the one who's guarding the mystical light cherry was a monster that formed its monster orb. The earth crawler ape was the leader of the pack of the wood eater ape. The earth crawler ape was a three meter tall ape with brown fur. Its arm was large and muscles were bulging. What should we do, Soda? Fred asked Soda. He knew that he could count on Soda in this kind of situation. He saw before that Soda had confidence in getting the mystical light cherry, so he will bet on it. He knew that his young miss wouldn't ask Soda for advice even when they were classmates. We will wait here for a while. Let them fight each other, Soda said in a low voice. He then turned his head and looked at Brian. I know. Before Soda could even say anything, Brian already answered him. It's good that you understand it. Soda nodded with a satisfied expression. They watched how the knights fought the powerful Wood Eater Apes. The apes have an advantage in terms of physical abilities but the knight's skill was better than apes. Also, their teamwork clearly surpasses the apes and it led the knights to defeat a lot of apes. But there's a problem. The numbers of the ape were greater than the knights. Soda could guess that the knights would lose their strength and would die soon. Also, the earth crawler ape wasn't even moving. After a few minutes of fighting, another group of knights appeared in the scene. It seems that these two groups knew each other so both of them decided to cooperate and kill the apes first. While they were watching the knights fought the apes, Soda heard several footsteps behind him. Hmm? He quickly stood up and looked behind. He saw a group of adventurers coming at this direction. Soda looked at Lumalia then back at the adventurers. The distance between them wasn't that large, so it's impossible to run. The clash between them was inevitable. Fred, come here. The rest stay away. Soda picked the most rational one among the group to come with him. Fred didn't answer him immediately. Instead, he looked at Lumalia first and when he saw her nod, he stood up. Soda looked at Brian and said, Brian, don't do anything. He then looked at Lumalia. Class rep, I'll leave them to you. Okay. Lumalia nodded at him. The adventurers stopped five meters away from Soda and Fred. The adventurers looked at Soda and Fred up and down. They could see that Soda was an adventurer like them but Fred was different. Fred was a butler of a noble house and they could see it in his outfit. After they finished assessing Soda and Fred, they looked behind them. They saw three girls, one boy, and a bear. They determined that Cluster was a noble from the way the girls were protecting her. Why are you here? Fred opened his mouth and asked the adventurers. Before the adventurers arrive here, Soda said that he will be the one that will talk with the adventurers. Hmm. I will ask you the same question why are you here? 
a man with a huge build stepped forward. While Fred and the adventurers were talking to each other, Soto was observing them from top to bottom. Their weapon, height, build, clothes, and feet. According to what he saw, these people weren't the ones who killed the monsters and nobles back there. Their weapons wouldn't leave the same mark like those people. Really, I'm getting too worried about the people who killed those people and monsters, Soda muttered with a grin on his face. He then slowly raised a thumbs up in the air. He said, it's okay, we can go all out now. Brian, you can go now, Soda shouted. The clash between his group and the other people that were after the mystical light cherry was inevitable. He got worried because of the people who killed those monsters. But now, he thought that he doesn't need to worry about it. He then turned his head to Juzman and said, protect her, it's going to get chaotic now. Justin nodded her head and she pulled Cluster to her chest. Soda jumped above the tree and saw that a lot of people were coming. The fight broke out in all areas. Ah! Brian charged towards the adventurers as soon as Soda gave him the signal. Swoosh! He gathered his mana on his fist and shot a powerful punch. The adventurer saw it. He grabbed the axe on his back and swung it towards Brian. Bang! Both of their attacks collided causing the earth to shook. Another two adventurers moved their body and appeared in both of Brian's side. Both of them quickly pulled out their weapons and waved it towards Brian. Clang! Clang! Brian saw a figure in front of him. It was Fred. He smiled and said, thanks. After Fred blocked those attacks, Fred stepped forward and slashed his sword. Clang! 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 Every time their weapon clashed, sparks flew out. Clang! 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 Fred's sword skill was overwhelming the two adventurers in front of him. He waved his sword with a speed surpassing the two adventurers. Gah! Arg! This guy! The two adventurers could only defend with their life on the line. Brian looked at Fred who was fighting two adventurers at the same time. He lifted up his hand and casted several spells. Lightning edge. Lightning boots. Scorching hand. Lightning crackled and flames rose up covering his hand. Okay, let's do this. Brian smiled. The adventurers pulled out their weapons and their mana flared up. Three of the quickly ran forward in the direction of Fred. These three wanted to help their comrades to defeat Fred. I won't let you, Brian said as he disappeared from his place. Crackle. He appeared in front of the three adventurers. Attack him. One of them shouted and launched his sword skill. Sword slash. The other two followed suit and executed their own skills. Glittering slice. Darting stab. Brian moved his body left and right dodging the attacks with a speed that they couldn't comprehend. He then proceeded to punch the three adventurers in the face with his, scorching hand. That's the high level spell, lightning boots, and, lightning edge. One of the adventurers recognized the spell that Brian used. They subconsciously took a step back. The leader of the group of adventurers was a young man with long black hair that was tied in a ponytail. He has fox ears and tails. The leader took a step forward and brandished his sword. He controlled his mana and poured it in his sword. Swoosh. He instantly appeared in front of Brian and swung his sword. So fast. Brian quickly reacted and he moved his body sideways. He then lifted up his feet and launched a powerful kick at the leader. Bang! The leader blocked it using his free hand and once again swung his sword towards Brian. Swoosh! Brian swiftly moved his hand in front of him and the sword and his, lightning edge, collided. Bang! Both of them took a distance to each other. You're strong. I can see that you're an adventurer. What's your rank? The leader asked. You're crazy strong too, but I'm just an E rank. Brian replied with a smile on his face. With your strength, you're just an E rank. Why don't you join us and I will help you rank up to D rank. The leader opened his palm and he invited Brian to join him. Unfortunately, my answer is no, Brian said. That's really unfortunate. The leader said and he dashed straight to Brian. Brian lifted up both of his hands and clashed against the leader. Clang. 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 Lumalia who was in the back lifted up both of her hands above her head. Her magical power rose up to the peak. The leader stopped for a moment when he felt Lumalia's mana. He looked around and saw her in the back. Stop her, he shouted while pointing his sword at Lumalia. Suddenly, a fist crashed into his face. Bang! He flew away and crashed in the tree. You should focus on your opponent when you're fighting someone, Brian said. The other adventurers snapped out of their dazed and dashed towards her. I will help you. Soda, who was observing the other battles in the area, looked down at Lumalia. He silently casted, shadow bind, to stop the movements of the adventurers. Swoosh! Arg! What's this? The adventurers panicked when their shadows suddenly bind them. Freezing point. Lumalia finished casting the high level spell that she was preparing. The temperature suddenly drops and the wind blew strongly. The ground started to turn into ice and all adventurers turned into an ice sculpture. 
Brian stopped moving and looked at the scene with wide eyes. He was shocked that the area around him turned into ice. This was the power of a tier 2 spell. Everything around Lumalia turned into ice except her comrades. Precisely it was 100 meters around her. The spell even stopped the other fights in the area around them. Lumalia fell down on her knees. The tier 2 spell, freezing point, drained almost all of her mana and her mana pool. As expected of class rep, she have tier 2 spell in her sleeves, Soda muttered. Even he doesn't know any tier 2 spell. All the spell he had were only a tier 1 spell for his low level class. He then casted the spell, Shadow Spike, to broke the ice. Bang! The spike pierced through the body of the people that were turned into ice. It painlessly killed all those people without even fighting back. Soda shook his head as he heard several system prompts inside his head. Now, that the fight here concluded, let me see the mystical light cherry. Soda stood up while patting his clothes. He looked at the mystical light cherry from his position and saw that it was still there. The, freezing point, spell didn't even leave a scratch to it. The earth crawler ape protected the cherry from any harm. Soda called Brian and let him see the mystical light cherry. I want you to steal the cherry when there's an opportunity, Soda said to Brian. He looked at Fred and said, the butler and I will distract the earth crawler ape later. Lumalia, you stay with the maid and cluster. You will immediately take them once Brian got the cherry. Soda explained his plan to them. He and Fred will distract the earth crawler ape while Brian will steal the cherry. The plan was to let the ape fought the other people first. Do you have a question? Soda asked as he looked at their face one by one. Lumalia shook her head and went beside Juzman and Cluster. She doesn't have much mana left, so Soda left her with Juzman and Cluster. Yuko, you stay with them and don't let anyone approach them, Soda said to Yuko. Mew. Yuko lowered her head in front of Soda. Soda smiled and he patted her head. He knew that she wanted a pat when she lowered her head in front of him. Good girl. Roar. The earth crawler ape roared loudly and it shook the whole area. The ape emitted a reddish aura and the orb on its chest glow brightly. The reddish aura swept out like ripples in the air. All the people who felt it stopped for a moment. This energy was different from mana. This energy was much more destructive and violent than mana. Yuko felt fear looking at the earth crawler ape. The ape was finally using its beast energy. This is best ferum. Fred shuddered when he felt the beast energy in the surrounding. The legendary energy of a monster that's more powerful than mana that we, humans and demis, use, Lumalia muttered while looking at the ape. Her instinct was telling her to run away. This is really something else. Soda smiled wryly looking at this scene. This made him want the monster orb more. He was truly looking forward when he formed his own monster orb and used the beast energy. The beast energy was suppressing the mana in the whole area. It made the people, who had low control in their mana, hard to cast a spell. The earth crawler ape roared once again and the orb in its chest emitted a black line. The black line stuck on the body of the ape and it became a black tattoo. The air of the ape was continuously rising without stopping. Oi! It's even no the, monster orb release. Soda said as he gripped the, Vajra sword Saya, on his waist. Monster orb release, was the skill of a monster that releases the full potential of the monster orb. The overall stats of the monster will drastically increase once they activate this skill. Roar. The people who were near the ape felt the suppression in the air. They started to tremble as fear and despair seep in their hearts. The ape turned its head to the people who were fighting the wood eater apes before. Thud. The ground shook slightly every time the ape took a step forward. No way. They could only watch the ape approach them slowly. The earth crawler ape used the monster orb release skill. The appearance of the ape drastically changed. Its brown fur turned into blood red color as jet black tattoo emerged in its body. Roar. The ape roared loudly and it shook the entire area. It was followed up by ripples of beast energy in the air. The group of knights was trembling in fear. They couldn't do anything but watch the earth crawler ape approach them. They were the nearest group that was close to the mystical light cherry and they also killed most of the wood eater ape. Actually, the earth crawler ape wouldn't even move. But Lumalia, freezing point, spell triggered the ape to move. It sensed the danger behind that spell and it caused the ape to move. The other groups who were fighting each other stopped when they felt the tier 2 spell and it was followed up by the transformation of the earth crawler ape. Including Soda's group, there were more than 5 groups in the area around the mystical light cherry. They were all close to the mystical light cherry. Some of them were adventurers from Hebrew Kingdom and the other were nobles from Melosa country. The nobles from Melosa country have great animosity to the people of Hebrew Kingdom because of what happened in the past. They became a laughing stock at that time. Their boasted powerful army was pushed back by one person. If the nobles from Melosa country were given a chance then they would take it just to get revenge on Hebrew Kingdom. 
Since the adventurers here were working for the people of Hebrae Kingdom, the nobles from Melosa country would try to get rid of them. They wouldn't let any force of the Hebrae Kingdom get the mystical light cherry. That's the reason why the fight broke out in all areas. But now it stopped. It was because of the transformation of the Earthcrawler ape. The transformation led them to realize that no matter how much they killed each other they wouldn't be able to acquire the mystical light cherry as long as the Earthcrawler ape was still alive. Soda, Brian, and Fred were hiding on the top of the tree. They were watching how the battle will unfold. Their number was less than all the groups in this place. Lumalia, Juzmin, Yuko, and Cluster were hiding far away from this place. They were preparing themselves to run away as soon as Brian get the mystical light cherry. As I said before, we will wait. We're not going to fight that monster head on. We're just going to distract it for you Brian. Soda said while looking at the ape. He knew that their power wasn't enough for the Earthcrawler ape. No matter what they did they wouldn't be able to defeat it. His plan was only to distract the ape and Brian would do his job. Okay, I know my role. I just need to steal that cherry, right? Brian nodded and glanced at the mystical light cherry. Yeah, but you need to run away as fast as you can after you stole the cherry, Soda said. Okay. Brian nodded as he rubbed his palm together. All the nobles and adventurers' attention was going to turn to Brian once he stole the cherry. Also, the earth crawler ape would chase after him. That's why Soda asked him if he knew another spell that could raise his speed other than, lightning boots. He replied to Soda by saying that he still has more spells that he hasn't show, so there's no need to worry. The ape charged to the group of knights. The young noble from Melosa country was scared and he fell down on his butt. Ah! Stop that monster! He shouted while pointing at the earth crawler apes with fear painted on his face. The leader of the knights looked at his comrades. He raised his sword and stabbed it on the ground. Boom! He imbued his mana in his sword, so his mana exploded snapping up his comrades. Don't be afraid, we're the proud knights of. The leader of the knights shouted and he pulled out his sword before he charged towards the ape. Ah! The rest of the knights also charged towards the apes. All of them gathered their mana and their weapons to make it more lethal. The earth crawler ape opened its mouth and it gathered its beast energy before it roared loudly towards the group of knights. Boom! The roar dispersed all the mana that the knights gathered. The roar had beast energy in it so when the roar clashed with the mana they gathered, the mana got scattered. Since, we're weaker than that monster. Don't use any mana or spell. Just use our combat arts. The leader of the knights shouted. Knights will. All of them activated their skill. Their speed and strength increased greatly when they activated their skill. The ape arrived in front of them and shot a powerful punch. Bang! Metallic body. The leader of the knights went in front of his comrades and blocked the punch using his sword. He used his combat arts to increase the defense of his body. Arg! He was pushed back three meters away. The sword in his hand formed a crack and he felt his hand going numb. Strong, he said before he spat a mouthful of blood. Just from one punch, he took so much damage. Surround! The rest of the knights formed a circle around the Earthcrawler ape. All of them used their combat arts and attacked the ape at the same time. Sword light, double stab, piercing wave. Several combat arts hit the body of the Earthcrawler ape. The ape lifted up its hand and covered its face. It let the combat arts hit its body. Bang! 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 Suddenly, the ape swung its free arm and grabbed one of the knights. It raised the knight up in the air before it smashed it on the other knights. Bang! This one move caused the other knights to stop moving. They all looked at their comrades. The ape lifted up both of its hands above its head before it smashed the ground. Boom! The ground shook heavily and it threw the balance of the knights. The knights fell down one by one before they got swept by the arm of the ape. Bang! 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 The other groups, who were watching the fight from the sideline, decided to step forward and took the initiative to steal the mystical light cherry. While the knights were fighting the earthcrawler ape, Another group of knights stepped forward to help them. I'm greedy, a knight of Yuvan family. What family do you serve? The leader of the knights asked the other one. I'm Vince, a knight of Huron family. Thank you for helping us. The leader of the knight of Huron family thanked the other leader for helping him. Don't worry we're all came from Melosa country. It's okay if you're the one who got the mystical light cherry but no matter what happens, we wouldn't let the people from Hebrae kingdom get it. Greedy said and he dashed towards the earth crawler ape. You're right, we wouldn't let those people from Hebrae Kingdom acquire the cherry. Vince said and he also charged towards the ape. Both of them was the leader of the knights in the group, so they have some skills that could injure the earth crawler ape. Bang! 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 The two leaders, Greedy and Vince, led the group to combat the earth crawler ape. The two took the front line and fought the ape side by side. Their power and teamwork were great that they managed to injure the earth crawler ape in just a few blows. While they were fighting the ape, 
a group of adventurers from Hebrae Kingdom went around to take the mystical light cherry. He he were quite lucky, one of the adventurers with a bow behind him said with a laugh. Yes, boss, we would earn a lot of money from this cherry. His comrades nodded at his words. Their group silently went around and slowly approached the mystical light cherry. All of them were quite excited as they got closer to the cherry. When they were 20 meters away from the cherry, the boss dashed with all of his strength and in just a few seconds he arrived in front of the cherry. He quickly stretched out his hand and plucked out the fruit from the tree. I got it. He smiled while looking at the small fruit in his hand. Roar. A powerful roar echoed behind him. The earth crawler ape ignored the knights in front of it and just went to the adventurer with high speed. It caused him to quickly turn around and run as fast as possible. Stop attacking the monster and focus on getting the mystical light cherry. The two leaders of the knight shouted. Both of them saw that an adventurer stole the fruit from the tree. The knights followed the command of their leader and they quickly chased after the adventurers. While the adventurers were running, their shadows suddenly shot upwards and strangled their bodies. It's not just the adventurers, the knights and the ape also were bound by their shadows. Swoosh! 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 What the hell? The boss of the adventurers shouted when his shadow bind him. WH he was about to use his force to break free when a figure appeared in front of him. The figure was clad in lightning and flame. It was none other than Brian. Brian arrived in front of the adventurer before he shot a punch towards the stomach of the adventurer. Bang! He then quickly took the mystical light cherry from the hand of the adventurer. Got it! Brian smiled before he turned around. Before he could run, a shadow covered him. He looked up and saw a huge boulder of rock flying toward him. Swoosh! He rolled sideways barely avoiding the boulder of rock. He lifted up his head and saw the ape was running in his direction. The earth crawler ape was extremely powerful that a simple spell like, shadow bind, wasn't enough to stop it. Not good. Brian looked around and found that the adventurers already surround him. These adventurers also possess some power as they could break free from level 5, shadow bind, in just a few seconds. There's no other choice. Brian said as he disappeared from his position and reappeared in front of the nearest adventurer. He reached out his hand and grabbed the adventurer and threw it at the other adventurer. Bang! Brian's speed and power were greatly enhanced because of the various spells that were casted on him. Soda also casted his, agility boost, and, strength boost, on Brian. The earth crawler ape and the knights were going to stop Brian when their shadows moved upwards once again. The ape simply shrugged the shadows and broke free from it. But the knights were different they weren't as strong as the ape so it would take a few seconds before they could get themselves free from these shadows. The heck, Greedy said as he grabbed the shadows and tore it apart. Who's the caster? Vince looked around trying to find the caster of the, shadow bind, spell. Both of them knew that Brian wasn't the caster of this spell. Since Brian was fighting the adventurers, he couldn't cast a spell to stop them. At first, they thought that it was Brian, but now it was the second time. It was impossible for Brian to be the caster. Suddenly, the area shook. Boom! They turned their heads and saw that the earth crawler ape was charging reddish energy in front of its mouth. The ape opened its mouth widely and a red ball of energy formed in its mouth. It spun like a razor before it expanded. The atmosphere in the surrounding area dropped as the ape charged its energy. Soda who was about to kill the knights with Fred stopped when he saw the ape charge the beast energy. He immediately shouted at Brian. Get down Brian. Duck down. Fred also shouted at the top of his lungs. He knew what the earth crawler ape was doing. The ape was charging the monster's unique and powerful skill, the, Bistru. Bistru, was a powerful attack skill of a monster. Only monster that formed its monster orb can use this skill. The monster will gather their beast energy or best ferrum and shot it like a powerful beam. The power behind, Bistru, was devastating and it could even destroy a large part of a huge city. The earth crawler ape shot the beam towards Brian. Swoosh! The red energy that was spinning like a razor expanded before it shot out. Swoosh! The red beam flew straight towards Brian. Brian turned his head when he heard Soda's and Fred's voice. He saw a red beam flying towards his direction. He placed his hand in front of him and quickly casted a spell. Protect me, lightning barrier, and, burning wall. A two-layer wall appeared in front of him. It was made of lightning and flame. These were just a tier 1 spells. He knew that this level of spell wasn't enough to stop the incoming attack. Brian raised both of his fists and launched a barrage of punches on the ground within a second. Bang! 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 He created a crater and jumped inside before he casted another defensive spell. He didn't stop by casting one spell, he casted several defensive spells at the same time to ensure his survival. All this happened within a few seconds. The adventurers around him were still looking at the beam. They didn't notice what Brian did at all as their mind was going blank from the pressure they felt. 
The red beam swallowed them before it exploded. The two spells that Brian casted in the surface didn't even last a second from the beam. Boom. The ground shook heavily as a mushroom of smoke and dust rose up in the sky. The trees and the rocks in the area around the explosion disintegrated. Some of the rocks were thrown in the sky and fell down with a loud sound creating small craters in the area. Bang. 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 Soda used his hand to cover his eyes as a gust of wind was blowing strongly. He couldn't control his mana to protect him because of the best team. His, mana manipulation, skill was just level 2, so he couldn't do complicated things with his mana like creating a barrier. The least he could do was cast a low level spell. He couldn't properly control his mana when there's a best ferrum suppressing the mana in the area around them. Arg! What a powerful attack! Fred gritted his teeth and he focused on protecting himself. He protected himself by using the defensive spell that he knew. A single low-level spell was enough to stop the powerful gust of wind. Vince and Greedy, the leaders of the knights, went to their young master and protected them. Their priority this time was to protect their young master or else their lord would punish them. In the worst case, their lord would kill them for not having the strength to protect their young master. Lumalia, Juzman, Cluster, and Yuko was stared when they saw a huge explosion. What's happening? Juzman muttered as she hugged Cluster tightly to her chest. I don't know but even at this distance, Lumalia said while looking at the explosion. Their distance from the battlefield was quite far, but still, they could feel the aftershock of the battle from this distance. The battle there must be quite intense. Lumalia looked at that direction with concern in her eyes. She doesn't have any idea how Brian and Soda could handle a fight like this. Don't worry, young miss, they will come back with the mystical light cherry, Juzman said to Lumalia when she saw her look. No. I'm not worried about the mystical light cherry anymore. Lumalia shook her head and said, I'm more worried about their well-being. Fred is there and also they are your classmates. Juzman while thinking about something. She added, young miss, can I ask what they are usually in class? Hmm? Lumalia was a little bit surprised at her question. She looked at her and asked, curious about them? Yeah. Juzman nodded at her. Hmm. Since I'm the class rep I know a little bit about my classmates. Brian is always in the limelight. He's always active, lively, and friendly. If I'm to say it, I think most of our classmates are already his friend. Lumalia told her what she thinks about Brian. She recalled something so she added, he's also doing what he wants and never care about what others say about him. He sometimes sleeps in class, so as a class rep I have to reprimand him. Hmm. Then what about the other one? Juzman nodded and asked about Soda. I've got to say that he's always with Brian and Alice. At first, I think that he's not an impressive individual. He's blank, always living in the shadows of Brian. But, Lumalia paused for a moment. She clearly had hesitation about what she's going to tell. But, Juzman looked at Lumalia as she tilted her head. Cluster was listening to their conversation silently in Juzman's arms. Lumalia looked down and started to tell Juzman what she thought about Soda. Lately, in the mini tournament in our class, Soda shown a terrifying side of him. He usually going along with Brian but in the tournament, he defeated everyone with his overwhelming strength. Also, the way he killed those bandits before. I think that he is the opposite of Brian. He doesn't show any remorse in taking lives. He's doing everything with rational thought and he could plan everything calmly even when there's an unknown powerful opponent waiting for him. He also wouldn't hesitate to use this who are close to him as a tool. Lumalia recalled what happened in the tournament. She remembered what Soda said at Alice at that time. He instigated Alice to use strength to tire out Brian so that in the upcoming fights he wouldn't have any problems. That's what also he did when Brian fought Brando from S.H.I.E.L.D. class. What I don't understand is why is he helping us. I can understand it if it's Brian but Soda. I don't think he's the type to help people without any benefits. Juzman looked at Lumalia and said, Is it because we help him in clearing the dungeon? Clearing the dungeon? No. Brian and Soda can do that with their own power. They don't need our help to clear the dungeon. Lumalia said as she shook her head. The only thing I could think of is that he wants the favor of a noble like you, young miss. Juzman said. No, I don't think that he will care about that. Lumalia shook her head. The whole area was covered in smoke and dust. This blocked everyone's vision in their surrounding. At most, they could only see 10 meters in front of them. Beyond that was nothing but dust and smoke. Cough. Cough. Soda coughed as he patted his clothes. He wrinkled his eyebrows and waved his hand. The smoke around him was blown away. Fred, are you there? Soda said while looking around him with a wary expression. Yeah, I'm here. A reply came behind Soda. Soda turned his head and looked at Fred. He opened his mouth and said, Stay where you are. I'm just going to check something. Soda was about to leave when a thunderous roar echoed in the whole area once again. 
The roar blew the smoke and dust in the whole area. Soda and Fred saw a huge crater. It was 30 meters in diameter and 10 meters in depth. What happened to Brian? Fred asked while looking at the crater. I don't know, Soda replied. He really doesn't know if Brian survived that attack or not. Well, it all depends on Brian. At the very least, he would get the mystical light cherry along with his corpse if Brian didn't manage to survive the attack to complete his quest. Suddenly, Soda felt something behind his head. He quickly crouched down and a blade passes over his head. Soda grabbed his sword and turned around while swinging his sword at the same time. Clang. He saw the one who attacked him was the leader of the knights. He frowned and silently casted, agility boost, and, strength boost. You're the comrade of the man who stole the cherry, right? Greedy, the leader of the knights, asked him. Soda didn't answer him but he took a glance at Fred and found that the other knight also attacked Fred. Luckily, Fred had some skills and managed to put up with the knight. Soda kicked the ground and took a distance from the knight leader Greedy. Greedy chased after him but Soda used, stab, four times in a row. Clang. 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 Greedy swiftly parried all of Soda's attack. His sword then emitted a blue light and he waved it toward Soda. A blue slash tore the air and it went straight to Soda. Soda gritted his teeth as his Vajra sword emitted a red light. Cross moon. The red slash tore the blue slash easily. It didn't stop at all as it flew straight towards the knight leader Greedy. Cross moon. Was an equipment skill of a dark grade weapon. It wouldn't lose to a low level skill like that. Greedy was shocked when he saw his attack disintegrated. He quickly regained himself, so he raised his sword and attempted to block the red slash. Boom. Fred was at a disadvantage fighting a knight leader like Vince. Their fight was one-sided. Vince was the one who's attacking while he was the one who's defending. He was just a butler of the Osvarez family that known some combat arts and spells. Clang. 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 He could only focused on blocking all the attacks of Vince. He couldn't see any opening and Vince surely wouldn't let him do what he was thinking. He wanted Soda to help him but he saw that Soda was also fighting a knight. I could only do this. He muttered when a voice sounded in the whole area. Ah. That was close. I thought I'm gonna die. The fight stopped when they heard a loud voice. They turned their heads only to found Brian's bloody figure. Vince and Greedy were shocked when they saw that Brian was still alive. Both of them thought that he died from the, this true, of the earth crawler ape. Brian's body was full of wounds and he was covered in blood. At his hand, he was still holding the mystical light cherry. Oh. Soda and Butler, Brian exclaimed when he saw Soda and Fred. Are you okay? Fred asked. Yeah, fine. Brian nodded. You should say no, Soda interjected. Then, the earth crawler ape saw the mystical light cherry in Brian's hand, so Brian became the target once again. Brian, get out of this forest as fast as you can, Soda said as he ignored the night leader and dashed towards the earth crawler ape. He wanted to ask how did Brian survive that attack but he knew that it's not a time for that. Cross moon. He used, cross moon, as he knew that this was one of the skills that could give the earth crawler ape a damage. Bang. The red slash hit the body of the earth crawler ape. Greedy and Vince saw this, so they were going to stop Soda and let the earth crawler ape kill Brian. But when they were about to move a strange voice sounded in the whole area. Soda stopped moving and also the earth crawler ape. Oof oof oof. What a fascinating scene this is. A bunch of people are trying to kill each other for a mere mystical light cherry. Oh god. What happened to the people nowadays? Have they lost your guidance? Ignore them. I don't want to waste any more of my time. Soda opened his eyes widely and his jaw almost drops when he saw the two people that appeared. His mind was thinking of a plan to get out of this place as soon as possible. Why? Why are they here in this sort of place? The commandments of the God's will. 